Hey everybody, in case you didn't know, August is Women in Translation Month. It is a month where different read-alongs are being hosted and across booktube and bookstagram, books written by women and translated into English are being celebrated. And I'm sure it's pretty much women uh, that wrote books and translated to any language that you can read. But today we are here to celebrate books written by women, translated into English to make your Women in Translation Month TBR explode. Let's get started. everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three. I have to say it has been a crazy week since I last spoke to you. I'm not going to get into some of the stuff that's gone on just in, in the, let's just call it in the orbit of my world. But it has been very, very crazy. But I have been doing some amazing reading and I'm really enjoying the books that I have been reading lately, so I can not complain. Um, so if you notice from my intro where I don't even know if it made any sense, August is Women in Translation Month. I know that I always celebrate this by following Matthew Sharapa and Kendra Winchester's Women in Translation Month read-alongs that they do and they come up with prompts and they make recommendations and um, Matthew is really my go-to person for literature and translation. But I thought I would do a little recommendation video of my own. So I have a small stack of books here um, to recommend to you. I've read all but three of these, so I can highly recommend almost all of them. I tried to keep out some of the people that I've recommended over and over again. Um, one, because, you know, you all watch my channel and I want to try to give you other recommendations. And two, I can only talk about Yoko Agawa and Magda Zabo so much. You know, I talk about them constantly um, and I love them so very much. They're two of my favorite writers of all time and they really could very well be in this pile. But today I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit more with some maybe some authors you haven't heard of so much. I did recognize when putting together this pile, I tend to gravitate towards Asian languages. So a lot of Korean writers, a lot of Japanese writers in this list. I did try to mix it up um, and I definitely try to have an eclectic taste there. Um, but I did notice that about myself. I mean, I own, I believe every Yoka Agawa book. I am in the, I think I own every um, Miko, I always forget how to say it, Kawakami book translated into English. Um, and I own a bunch of different like one-offs by Korean and Japanese women and men. And it just, it appears that that is where my sweet spot is, but I have a great list for you. I was just rambling. Get out your books, uh, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, I highly recommend to order these books from your local independent bookstore, or you can get them from your library. Now, every book I'm going to talk about has been out for quite some time, so you can get your hands on them as soon as possible. We are actually going to start with a book that comes to us from Iceland, and I've actually talked about it in a couple of videos. I want to say I, I read this a few years ago, and that's A Fist or a Heart by Kristen Eric's Daughter, translated from the Icelandic by Larissa Kaiser. I'm going to hold that up. And this is out from Amazon Crossing, and I remember not knowing a ton about this book, but once I started it, I was completely engaged. So at the center of this is our main character. I think she's like a woman in her 70s. She's sort of um, reclusive, very in, um, introverted, and she, for a living, makes uh, designs props for plays and for movies. And she's currently working on a play with a very young, young playwright who is also rather introverted in her own way. And we find out that she's actually the... I hate this word, but this is the word used, the Ill illegitimate daughter of um, a very famous writer. And so she is putting on this play, and this woman is working on the play, and she sort of gets this maternal instinct and wants to take care of her. But she realizes that they've met before, or 
have they met before? She has sort of like this weird recognition of this young girl and sort of this idea of why do I remember this? You don't remember this. How is this formed? And sort of that sort of weird angle creeps into their relationship they're building as this young woman is under a ton of pressure to produce this play. And the woman is trying to sort of help her through it, but does the young woman even want that help? I hope I sold that right. It is fantastic. And that's A Fist or A Heart by Aaron, uh, Kristen Eric's Doder, translated from the Icelandic by Larissa Kaiser. This one has fantastically beautiful hardback too. It's so pretty. And you'll know exactly what that little horse is about if you read the book. Okay, let's go to Korea and talk about City of Ash and Red by He Yong Pyon, translated from the Korean by Sora Kim Russell. I'm a huge fan of Sora Kim Russell's books, uh, translations. She translated How I Became a North Korean by, oh, Crystal, is it Crystal Lee? I'm sorry, I'm totally blanking on the author's name, um, but uh, it was fantastic. It could have very well been in this pile as well. But um, this was actually recommended by Matt years ago and I bought it. This is one that I have not read, but this is sort of like a, a science fiction-y sort of dystopian horror novel. But at the heart of it, we have a, a person, a man who is known for his ability to kill rats. And he is invited to this country um, sort of this unnamed country to deal with a huge infest infest infestation that is causing all sorts of illness. But once he gets there, he is automatically thrown into prison and he's sort of isolated. And he realizes that he has no way of contacting the real world or having anyone assist him. He finally does make contact with a friend of his who tells him that um, his ex-girlfriend or ex-wife, I can't remember, um, has, was found dead in his apartment that he had left and he is the main suspect. So now he's free in the city trying to transverse the city where he doesn't know anything or anyone on the run for a murder he did not commit. Um, yeah, th that sounds fantastic. It also sounds like it could be a TV show at any minute now. Um, and that is City of Ash and Red, a novel by He Yong Pyun, translated from the Korean by Sora Kim Russell. I am gonna do my best y'all to um, pronounce all of these names to my best ability. Um, I apologize if my pronunciation is a little off, but I did practice and I'm hoping that I get them right. If you're looking for something sort of fabulistic, a little more lighthearted with a really good moral story, if you're looking for something in Women in Translation Month to maybe read to your kids, this is the perfect book. And that's The Hen Who dreamed she could fly but by Sun Mi Wang. This is also translated from the Korean and it is translated by Chi Young Kim, um, who lives here in Los Angeles, just down the way from me. So, you know, that's good. And this is literally, as it said, this is the story of a young chicken. Her name is Sprout, I believe, Sprout. Um, she's tired of having eggs and watching them walk, you know, come in and people take them away. So she devises this plan on how to get out of the pen's pen how to finally get free and fly. And it's this whole story of her creating this plan and what she wants to do when she's out and all of that. So it's got sort of a, it's weird to say this, and hopefully it had a little bit of like a Winnie the Pooh vibe to me, but also a little bit more, um, you know, it's not dark like Animal Farm, but it has sort of like that that gravitas when you talk about sort of the lessons and morals that you can take from it, if that makes sense. Um, I read this really fast. I actually bought this in an airport where I then presented to spill coffee on it while I was flying home, um, but I read it on the plane ride home. So that's The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly by Sun Mi Wang, translated from the Korean by Chi Young. Kim and the illustrations are by Namako, Namako, and they're very adorable throughout the whole thing. It's got a great little feel to it. So highly, highly recommend. Um, this book probably doesn't need any introduction. When you win the, win the Man Booker International Prize, you pretty much got it. But this is Celestial Bodies by Joka Alharthi. And this is translated from the Arabic by Marilyn Booth. And this is, um, this book is so good. This is set in Oman, which I believe this is actually the first book translated in Arabic to win the uh, to win the Man Booker. Let me 
make sure that is true. I think that is true. And um, yeah, the first novel originally written in Arabic to win the Man Booker International Prize. Yeah. And I believe it's the first book by a female um, Omani author translated into English as well. And um, this is the story of three sisters, three sisters in their town, in their community, all at different stages in wanting relationships. We have sort of the older sister who has sort of had this heartbreak and winds up entering a marriage. Um, really a strategic marriage and sort of how that all works for her as she finds her place in that marriage. The middle daughter is, um, she wants a different life, a different type of marriage. She doesn't want to, to sort of adhere to the cultural traditions, um, wants it to be a little bit more on her own terms. And then the other uh, sister, um, she is in love with a man who has um, went to Canada. And she doesn't even really know if he will ever come back, though he promised he would, and she believes that, but does no one else really believes that. And you know, Oman is a country that has a lot of history. It has a huge history in the slave trade, and a lot of stuff um, regarding that is sort of in, uh, discussed within as it, you know, tries to reinvent itself past that. Um, I watched a couple of videos about the country because I did not know anything about it prior to reading this book, and it was fascinating and the book is so good and that's Celestial Bodies by Joka Al Harthi translated from the Arabic by Marilyn Booth. Okay now we're going to go to a little Spanish fiction and I am going to struggle to say this word but the title of this book is prosopognosia and I believe this is the inability to see people's faces. I believe that that's what that is. Don't quote me. Um, this is after work. I'm a little bit tired. I could be wrong. And this is by Sonia Hernandez, translated from the Spanish by um, Samuel Rudder. And I'm going to hold this up. This is out from Scribe Press. And so this is this book sounds like a trip. So we have a young girl. I think she's like 15, 14, 15 years old. Um, that is ha struggles with a sense of self worth. She just doesn't believe that anything beautiful or wonderful is really meant for her. So she plays this game where she holds her breath until she can't absolutely see her face. She calls it the um, prosopognosia game. And, um, and so it makes her faint eventually from lack of air. We have her mother who is going through a divorce. Her fa She's newly trying to figure out how she wants to be involved in the lives of her daughters. And she's really invested to make them as happy as possible. And then one day the young girl faints and a famous uh, um, artist is there and he promises to make her a painting, make her um, art. And um, this sort of sets into motion the rest of the entire tale. Um, so yes, that is pros... <laughs> I have to read it this way, you guys. I can't read it on the camera. Prosopognosia by Sonia Hernandez, translated from the Spanish by Samuel Rudder. And um, yeah, so that is a different take. All of these books, similar in their just wonderfulness, but very different in their what they want to discuss. Okay, another book that was shortlisted for the Stella Prize, and I believe shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize as well, is The Enlightenment of the Greenage Tree by Shukfe Azar. And I want to say this is, tr oh, the translator for this. So this was translated from Persian, but the translator for this, due to the fact that um, she is from Iran, um, wanted to remain anonymous uh, due to sort of fear. Um, and that I think is fascinating as you read this book as well. You learn a lot. So this is set about um, a decade or about 10 years following the Islamic Revolution. And we have this family that's moved from Tehran to this little um, more rustic village and is trying to sort of maintain their um, intellectual property and their freedom. Told from the point of view of a young girl, a 13 year old girl who actually dies. So it's like her ghost telling the story. There's a weird um, sense of um, mystery to all of it, but in the same sense, it's kind of sort of like this magical realism feeling as she observes everything going on. and. 
she gives you sort of, she gives you your point of reference, but you have to wonder at her age if she understands the point of reference or what's really going on. Um, I remember, re so it's been a bit since I've read this one, but I remember being blown away by the descriptive language and sort of just how the picture was painted in this novel. The author is just so amazing at doing this sort of story visually in your head via words, if that makes sense. Um, so this is The Enlightenment of the Greenage Tree by Shu Kfei Azar, translated from the Persian. Um, and thank you for the translator for doing it because it is fantastic. And this is out from Europa. You know I love them so very, very much. Okay, I have two books now. I'm down to my last three by the same author because she has newly become someone that I am absolutely obsessed with. And funny enough, she had two really big books come out in the last two years. And it turns out I had already read a book by her and I didn't remember it was the same author. Who am I talking about? I am talking about um, Miko Kawakami. And this is her not first book that I read, Ms. Ice Cream Sandwich. And then of course, I've already raved about Heaven by her out from Europa. Um, Ice Cream Sandwich is out from Pushkin Press and was translated from the Japanese by Louise Hill Kwai, K-A-W-A-I. And then this one, uh, Heaven, is translated from the Japanese by a duo, uh, Sam Bett and David Boyd. So this is a little bit of a, no this is just a little bitty book. It's a novella about a young boy who is absolutely obsessed with this woman that he calls Miss Ice Cream Sandwich. She works in the local grocery and um, she makes sandwiches and does all this kind of stuff. And he's just fascinated with her and sort of obsessed with her. And she has uh, blue eyeshadow on and he sort of becomes enamored with her. And as he continues sort of this enamored relationship with her, the real world starts to come in and force his hand to sort of take notice of other things. Um, I remember loving this book um, and I'm so glad to realize that I am now like a stan, a, such a fan. So this is Miss Ice Cream Sandwich by Mieko Kawakami. And then Heaven is the story of two young middle grade children that are severely bullied at school and the effects that that bullying has not only on themselves but on the relationship they're able to make with others and their relationships outside of school with themselves and also with their parents and their friend groups i will warn you there's some this is about bullying so it can be a bit triggering it is emotionally exhausting and it is tear inducing at the same time it is freaking brilliant. Um, I still have uh, Breasts and Eggs sitting on my shelf to read. I bought them both at the same time. However, Breasts and Eggs had such a hype um, because it had done so well. People were talking about it. I decided I was going to read everything else first and then I would read Breasts and Eggs. But I loved this book. It broke my heart. It will break yours. And it is so good. So this is Heaven by Miyoko, Miyoko Kawakami, translated from the Japanese by uh, Scott, uh, Bet, um, Sam Bett and David Boyd. So very, very good. Okay, last but not least, let's throw in a little French literature. And this is Painting Time by Melise de Keringal, translated from the French by Jessica Moore. Let me hold you up this fantastic, fantastic cover. So this is the story of um, a young woman who is a young artist. Her name is Paula. And she enrolls in this very famous institute uh, for art. And she has a very specific way that she does art. And um, this is one of the ones that I haven't read, y'all. So I bought this on the recommendation of my friend Ryan, who had read one of her other books, The Cook, translated and said it was fantastic. So she has this documentary filmmaker who is sort of following her career around. Um, and he starts, uh, let me just read it. It says, with the attention of the documentary filmmaker, uh, Paula's career, which is punctuated by brushstrokes, hard work, sleepless nights, sore muscles, and long festive evenings, an enchanted and atmospheric coming-of-age novel. This paints an intimate and an unsparing exploration into craft, inspiration, and contours. If I remember correctly, she, Paula, strives to understand the specifics of what she's painting. So she wants to know the essence of the wood. She wants to know about marbles, 
you know, like the inner parts of what she's creating. So she has a different look and aspect on her art. I hope I did this one justice. Um, but I think it sounds really, really good. So this is Painting Time by Melise de Carangal, translated by Jessica Moore. And this one's out from FSG. I bought this at my one of my favorite bookstores, which is um, uh, Bookshop Santa Cruz. I always want to say Santa Cruz Bookshop, but it's Bookshop Santa Cruz, um, which is a fantastic bookstore if you're ever in the California and the Santa Cruz, San Jose's area highly recommend it you can actually do santa cruz and san francisco and you could do a bunch of different amazing bookstores dm me if you need suggestions there you go that was like this big long uh tirade again i'm just um, babbling on today so here is a list of some books for you to add to your women in translation tbr i hope you're reading at least one book by women in translation this month and that you really really um enjoy the amazing literature that is being translated into english or whatever language you speak uh on your first um i hope you're getting it because there are so many amazing books out there that without translators we wouldn't be able to read and i can't believe that i didn't talk about olga and um Flights I could have put on this list, and Jennifer Croft, who has uh, been just translated that. She also just translated Olga's major book. I say Olga like we're friends, because she liked a tweet by me once. Um, <laughs> but the book of Jacob, I believe it's called, so I could have talked about all of that. Yeah, so there we go. There I am again, uh, just rambling on. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. Thank you so much for coming back. I know I'm not always the most um, consistent uploader. Life just gets in the way, but I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you are a new subscriber to my channel, I hope you stick around. I hope you hit that subscribe button and like this video and that you stick around to hear me talk more about books. So as always, I so, so encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye!